tensions are running high. Chris Rufo makes some people very mad. <laughs> who is Rufo? He's a journalist who once made documentaries for PBS about things like baseball in China and poverty in America. Seems like poverty is kind of like a really mean disease. But then his poverty research brought him odd leaks from government poverty workers. Mid-level bureaucrats so exasperated what was, with what was happening, they started feeding me documents. Documents like these that reveal Seattle's government trained employees to practice self-talk that affirms their complicity in racism and white people should work on undoing your own whiteness. The intention is to have a, an emotional lever against you no matter what you do. What's in it for them? Why do it? career advancement, and then cultural and emotional power over others. He says today's so-called diversity training is based on the obscure academic specialty, critical race theory. Tweeting examples of it brought lots of responses. It really kind of snowballed. I did, you know, one story and then I'd get, you know, five or six people sending me documents that I might package into another story. And then suddenly it was a hundred people and a thousand people. He learned the DEI officials at the University of Texas had issued a language guide that recommended using the word women spelled W-I-M-M-I-N in order to not use the word men. After Rufo publicized that, the university removed its language guide. What are these people doing? Uh, to the point where they have time to be policing language and replacing words with total absurdities. A worker at Sandia Labs, the big defense contractor, sent Rufo Sandia's new hiring rules. At least one qualified woman and a qualified minority must be interviewed. Sounds fair. Make up for past discrimination. Certainly, you should be open to and encouraging a wide variety of people to apply to jobs. But when we're talking especially about uh, nuclear weapons, you need to have the most capable individuals regardless of race or sex. A Sandia employee described Sandia's mandatory training. A three-day camp where they had to atone for their white privilege, atone for their heterosexual privilege, and even write letters of apology to imaginary women and people of color. And this kind of thing is happening, unfortunately, all over the country. Rufo's critics say he's pushing moral panic. Chris Rufo, one of the conservative activists who's pursuing this moral panic. The New Yorker did a big profile on you and titled it the conservative who invented the conflict over critical race theory. You invented this. I actually post all of the original source documents for every one of my stories. Wait, Let wait, me respond. Wait, 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 this is, this is not a monologue. This one should moment. be a dialogue, no, right? Uh, Am I right? It's, well, it's my show. His media opponents accuse him of making things up. You Think made up it, your you, own you, thing, bro. You made, my friend, you made up your own thing. It's, it's so shameful when it's exposed to the sunlight that they've engaged in these accusations as a form of denial. DEI departments do tell workers, be less white. All 100 of the Fortune 100 companies have DEI bureaucracies. It's seen as second nature to, for example, endorse Black Lives Matter, a left-wing kind of racial activist organization uh, that was responsible for uh, rioting, violence. But if you were to say, you know, I'm pro-life and I want to have a, a pro-life message in a corporate setting, it would be shut down immediately. You would certainly uh, be at risk of, of, of ostracization, maybe even losing your job. Why are only one set of uh, narratives and political ideologies allowed? Because America's history of slavery and oppression is just so bad. But that's also based on a lie, of course. Slavery is an abominable uh, historical legacy in the United States. But the, the record of the United States on, on slavery um, on a comparative basis is much better uh, than almost anywhere else. The idea is that the founders fought the revolution to protect slavery. That was one of the claims in the 1619 Project, which is you know kind of so mind boggling that even the Marxist historians um, you know, debunked it and said, this is absolutely preposterous. Florida is where woke goes to die. In Florida, Governor DeSantis appointed Rufo trustee of a state-funded college. Now Rufo is no longer just a journalist. He has authority, although DeSantis still seems not to know his name. Christopher Russo from the Manhattan Institute. Rufo quickly made big changes. We fired the director of DEI and abolished her entire department. That upset activists at the school. 
The Washington Post covered them protesting Rufo's appointment. The vast majority of you, 90, 95% roughly, agree with me that there are significant problems here. No. 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 You are the problem. You are the problem. You are the problem. No, I, I, I'm not the problem. I'm actually the solution. At one point, the University of Provost tried to stop Rufo from speaking, saying there'd been an anonymous threat. We cannot so, put our community at risk. This is a new technique for your opponents to stop you from speaking, to raise the issue of danger and then say it's too dangerous, we can't allow you to speak. That's right. Someone sent in a death threat. Anybody who enters this event at this point is at risk. We cannot give veto power to anyone who makes an anonymous threat because what will happen is that they'll make an anonymous threat uh, before anything that they don't like. Rufo insisted the meeting go forward. We're the board members. We voted. We have two to one. We're not going to let you shut this down. The provost later resigned. Florida has now banned all public universities from funding DEI programs and from claiming that systemic racism and sexism are inherent in the U.S. Free speech advocates call that flatly unconstitutional. I worry about things you and DeSantis are doing. It just feels authoritarian on the other side. A teacher cannot teach the 1619 project? It's not allowed in Florida. We have impressionable young kids that should not be taught race hatred. And these are common sense restrictions that aren't authoritarian. They're simply acknowledging that the state is the authority in the public schools. My neck of the woods, the Northeast, which leans left, maybe those states will ban using my videos in classrooms or they'll ban teaching Milton Friedman in free markets. That's OK. I mean, I think that's probably already the status quo in most of these blue states. I don't think that Seattle public schools, San Francisco public schools and Boston public schools are are heavy on the Milton Friedman curriculum. Why is the state the authority? Why not local school boards? I would prefer that to the current system. But the fact is that that's not the status quo in any of the 50 states. You don't worry that in the future, the new Florida governor will just flip these things and require teaching of critical race theory? Of course I worry about that. But that's what democracy is for. That's what politics is for. Really? That's what politics is for? Curriculum changes every election? I think we're better off if politicians butt out. Give power back to parents with school choice. Then parents can decide whether they want their kids to focus on the 1619 project or what Rufo prefers. Reading Aquinas, the founders, Lincoln, Frederick Douglass. Rufo supports school choice, but today most parents have no choice. Many are stuck with teachers like this who say every teacher must say systemic racism dominates America. If you don't believe in systemic racism and how it negatively impacts our students of color and don't want to help dismantle those systems, please don't teach. These are not isolated incidents, but in fact, this is the mainstream uh, in almost all of our institutions. Soon we'll release our full interview with Chris Rufo. If you like our videos, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell.